And we start with a rare act of gun violence in New Zealand ahead of one of the biggest sporting events in the world, the Women's World Cup. Police say a gunman shot and killed two people in the city centre of Auckland. At least six others were injured, including police officers. The attacker also died at the scene. New Zealand's Prime Minister says there is no wider national security threat. He described how the shooting unfolded. The offender was armed with a pump-action shotgun. He moved through the building site, discharging the firearm as he went. Upon reaching the upper levels of the building, the man contained himself in an elevator. Shots were fired and he was located a short time later. I want to thank the brave men and women of the New Zealand police who ran into the gunfire straight into harm's way in order to save the lives of others. Well, the shooting happened on a construction site in the central business district of Auckland. These workers described what they saw. I saw like 20 people rushing out of the building and uh, telling the pedestrians to move. I was like, what happened? And I go ask them, they, see, they say like we saw a, a guy with a shotgun in his hand and he was aiming for people. All the cop cars and ambers and firearm squad and armed defenders. And um, from where we were, we were um, heard a few gunshots. Well, as we have said, uh, this has been going on in Auckland, just ahead of the kickoff of the Women's World Cup. Let's go live there now to speak to TVNZ reporter Aziz Al Safin. What more can you tell us about this incident? Sure, uh, Sally. Well, it is just hitting 4 p.m. here, and while it seems to be quite calm in front of the precinct construction building at about 7 a.m. It was a very different story. Let's be all here at about 7.30 after hearing gunshots. Uh, then they went and made their way into this building behind me, the precinct building, which is just under construction in what is a busy, hustling and bustling part of Auckland City. At just after 8 a.m., five more shots we heard in quick succession. Now, what we know um, and what Prime Minister Chris Hipkins, as you just heard, confirmed was that this man made his way into the building behind me. We now also know that he was a construction worker, which is why he knew the lack of the building. He started firing on level three of the building and then proceeded to barricade himself into the elevator, at which point Police tried to engage with the alleged defender. Um, they were unsuccessful and more shots were fired. A police officer was injured, critically injured, might I add, in the um, negotiation. Um, and then the shooter was then found dead. We know that the other two were in fact civilians. And we can confirm now that 10 others have been injured. They were all taken to Auckland City Hospital. One of those people, as I just mentioned, was that police officer who suffered a gunshot wound. He was in a critical but now stable condition. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, this is the day where it was meant to be a day of celebrations. The FIFA Women's World Cup was kicking off and is still uh, set to go ahead at Auckland's Eden Park with New Zealand set to verse Norway. Um, if you can see behind me, there is a hotel. That is where the Norway team was staying. They were woken up at about 7 a.m. to gunshots and the police eagle helicopter. Uh, and just 100 metres away from me, to my right, is where the fan zone was meant to take place. We've now just learnt that that fan zone has been cancelled for the day. The tournament is still set to go ahead. Um, and what should have been a day of laughs, happiness and celebration now really has just turned into a day of complete disbelief. OK, Aziz Al Safin for now. Thank you very much for the very latest on that. Uh, TVNZ reporter at the scene. Well, as we said, the shooting came hours before the Women's World Cup is due to begin. New Zealand Sports Minister Grant Robinson said the incident would not affect the tournament. There are a number of teams, as you'll be aware, who were staying in the immediate area. Uh, they are all safe and sound. Uh, and as the cordon moves in, they will go about the normal business of today for them. For some of them, uh, that involves playing this evening. For others, that involves moving to other locations in New Zealand to play their games. So they will, um, in the course of the next few hours, uh, do what they were always going to do, go to training, go to play and so on.